The focus of my research is about uh, ERCP in pediatric population, especially performed by adult gastroenterologists. We systemically aim to uh, evaluate the clinical outcomes uh, to determine safety and effic uh, efficacy of ERCP done in pediatric population compared to their adult cohorts when it is matched with uh, difficulty and complexity of the procedures. Our study came from a fact that nowadays it is not uncommon for adult gastroenterologists to perform an ERCP in pediatric patients, despite there are a lot of different challenges in this unique population. Uh, whether there's going to be a reduced room for working space and higher complex and congenital anomalies or um, quote-unquote less simple straightforward cases. And there are also very limited existing data on safety and efficacy on uh, ERCP in children. And such practice when adult proceduralists performing an ERCP in uh, children using adult scope has, is much less validated compared to their adult counterparts. So we hope to shine some light on the topic. Therefore, we conducted a retrospective case control study comparing clinical outcomes and safety and efficacy of uh, ERCP in children uh, as compared to uh, adult control uh, uh, matched uh, subjects. From a total of 214 uh, ERCPs, half of them were done in children, the other half were done in adult controls. Uh, the youngest patient we had was 5 years old and the mean age was 12 to 13 years old. We found that there was no statistical significant difference in uh, ERCP in pediatric populations compared to our control adults. We also found no difference in primary outcomes which are technical success rate, clinical success rate and complications rate. There were also no difference in technical aspects of the procedures including the cannulation device being used, a procedural time and a fluoroscopy time and number of repeated procedures after the index procedures. The most significant things that we found is that there was no uh, clinical significant difference in terms of clinical outcomes in uh, pediatric ERCPs when performed by adult gastroenterologists. We also did uh, subgroup analyses of two interesting cohorts when we looked into uh, specifically into index procedures, meaning those with native papilla and highly complex procedures, meaning uh, ASGE uh, complexity score of three and above. And we found that the results are virtually the same. Uh, that is, there's um, no comparable, uh, there the, no, no, differ no difference in pediatric ERCP compared to adult procedures. We also did a comparative evaluation of pediatric ERCP undergoing general anesthesia as opposed to moderate, uh, monitored anesthetic care using propofol uh, without intubation and we found that they are also the same. It is a growing field, even though that the need for ERCP in this unique population is not as common in adult, but the challenges of the procedure, the safety and efficacy of the procedure need to be validated. As a training program, uh, at, in terms of medical education, it is also important to have a set milestone or set number of procedures for trainees to achieve in order to become certified in doing pediatric ERCP, uh, the area of which we're still lacking. So we hope that our study can 
shine some light into the field of advanced, advanced endoscopy in pediatric gastroenterology. We at Emory University are in the process also to uh, developing a, a joint program uh, at Children's Hospital for specifically for this purpose. And we also encourage other training programs to do the same so that we can uh, further develop the field of pediatric endoscope. So in conclusion of our uh, study, we, uh, we found that uh, there is no difference, uh, meaning equivalent safety and efficacy uh, when adult gastroenterologists perform an ERCP for uh, children for pediatric population. Our results also suggested that there is no uh, significance in using general anesthesia as opposed to uh, monitored anesthetic care without intubation. Only two different parameters that we found uh, in our study is one, uh, pediatric population were more likely to require general anesthesia undergoing an ERCP. And two, uh, pediatric populations are more likely to require post-procedure hospitalization. With that being said, we do believe that these results are, are merely a reflection of a practice pattern variation rather than a true effect of the procedure itself, given the equivalent safety profile. And we hope that these results can, can somewhat change that practice and have uh, less likelihood of, or at least comparable likelihood of pediatric patients undergoing uh, general anesthesia and having a post-procedure admission rate. Our study is somewhat limited by uh, the fact that we used only adult duodenoscope uh, for patients with age older than five years old. So extra caution should be exercised when extrapolating our result into patients who are uh, smaller, uh, yeah, less body weight, and uh, or neonates who require pediatric duodenoscope as uh, it was not used in this study. So this further area should be further clarified. Also, our study used only single endoscopist who is highly experienced with more than 10,000 ERCP performed. Whether the results can be hold true when performed by a less experienced endoscopist, that remains in question. Also, like uh, I mentioned before, as a training program, the uh, study on medical education and, and uh, to find a set milestone or a set number of procedures for trainees to achieve in order to become certified in pediatric ERCP, that should still be encouraged and, and further study uh, in order to develop uh, more clarity in the field.